I don't want to um, offend anyone also because I know that it's not very black and white. But I do notice uh, another a large part of my research in the recent past has been the colonial hangover of the piano in South Asian circles. The piano, for example, has been in India as long as it has been in Europe. It has been in India the whole time. And yet accessibility to this instrument is absolutely non-existent uh, unless you come from a specific social strata. And the manner it is uh, taught in India is still a complete detour. Like um, studying piano in India is almost equivalent to studying European classical music first or some form of institutionalized jazz. P piano studies and sight reading studies are uh, almost kind of bundled into the same thing. Anyone who just wants to learn piano without necessarily wanting to read um, music is uh, frowned upon. And I'm not yeah, dissing sure. that completely. I'm not dissing that completely, but it completely bypasses an enormously important culture in the history of piano of pianists who didn't read music. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and yeah, uh, totally, there is totally something agree. seriously wrong with that, which doesn't get talked about enough. Sorry, I interrupted you again. No, no, it's all good. Uh, yeah, I was just saying like... Uh... Obviously, when we talk about uh, neurodivergent musicians mm -hmm. and people, you know, people on the spectrum, like that are amazing musicians, like there's, like you were saying, there's uh, people that are dyslexic um, and, mm -hmm. you know, there's so many barriers that they have, but the system is not working for them. And, you know, trying to fit everyone into a system that is, uh, you know, catering to a very specific population and a very specific uh, neurotypical people like that is completely ridiculous 